Hi. Uh, an hour ago, a colleague asked, asked, asked me uh, what's the topic of my presentation. And uh, when I said to him that it's called algebraic data types, his response was, you lost me at algebraic. Uh, and that's true. So I think that after this talk, everyone in, the, in this uh, nice venue will be able to explain their colleagues uh, what are algebraic data types and what they are used for. Uh, as uh, Bruce introduced me, my name is Marius. I'm from Vilnius. I work at Wix. And in Wix, we create a product called Corvid. A Corvid is a develop development platform uh, designed for professional developers where we provide them with a built-in database, a dynamic ba data binding to UI components, a code runtime both for front-end and back-end, and many more features. And this all comes uh, without any configuration. I was thinking, uh, what is the purpose of having and using types? Uh, is it some type inference, maybe some help uh, from auto-completion? Uh, some might say that uh, the purpose is to catch bugs at compile time instead of the runtime. But for me personally, it's a very difficult question because I cannot imagine a world without types. Everywhere I look, I see just types. And uh, let me explain what I mean. I have a few of these uh, quick questions during my presentation, and the first one is the easiest one. Uh, guess the type. So guess the type of these two objects on the screen. A car, right. Uh, that's what I also think. Uh, another one. Dog. Most likely, yes. And the more, more challenging one? Vehicle. Easy, wasn't it? So, but how do we know types of these objects? We didn't see these type with these objects before. We didn't read any type declaration, declarations or type definitions, but somehow we know. And I think that types are not in the code. Types are in our brain. And brain is actually very good at processing all the types around us. And I'm, I think the whole world can be called one huge type system. And our brain is responsible for modeling all the small types, composing them into bigger types, and that's how we understand what is going on around us. For example, taking this very small subset of the world, we see that uh, operating system is Linux, or Windows, or Mac, where a computer is, needs both a hardware and operating system. Same goes for workplace. It needs a computer and a chair and a desk. And uh, there are more examples of that. And I think it is wonderful that our brain can process all that information using just two logical operators, and and or. And uh, talking about uh, algebraic data types, we will look at each of these two operators. The first example type is called fruit salad. And to prepare a fruit salad, we need an apple and a banana and a cherry, one of each kinds of the fruit. So the question, let's think about it. How many different fruit salads can we prepare? Does anyone know the answer? 12, somebody said. Okay, yeah, actually 12 is correct. So how do we get, get 12? And we get it by multiplying. Three different apples times two different banana times two different cherries. In mathematics, the result of the multiplication operation is called a product. That's why a type, when we compose smaller types using end operator is called a product type. This is an example in JavaScript. A product type, a person, which is an object. It is composed out of three simple types, a string, a number, and a boolean. Another example is fruit snack. And this time for a fruit snack, we can have either an apple 
or a banana or a cherry? So, the same question again. How many different fruit snacks can we have? Seven. Correct, it is seven. This one was easier, I guess. Uh, so, how do we get it? We simply add all the different fruits. Three bananas, three apples, sorry, two bananas and two cherries. So, the operation mathematics we just uh, did was, is called uh, addition. And the result of this operation is called a sum. That's, that means that the types created by uh, using the logical OR operator are called sum types. So, I just covered two classes of algebraic data types. And I think we, we now understand why they are called the product type or a sum type. But why the definition itself is called algebraic? Well, I talked a little bit about mathematics. And these operations, addition and multiplication, comes from mathematics. More specifically, they come from algebra. And that's why they are called algebraic. So the title is quite scary for people who doesn't know where it comes from. But giving this explanation, I think it, it makes it really simple. So all the concepts I talked before are language agnostic, which means that it's a law. It's a law like in mathematics. And we can apply this knowledge in any language we program. And not in, even in language, in modeling the, the world around us. Going back to the sum types, is it fine to use sum types in the code? Some types, sometimes it makes sense, like the snack type, but specifically in code, it looks like we are mixing different things together. And uh, usually it is accepted as a bad practice to mix different types or classes or things in general together. But I would say that it's not bad. And uh, moreover, I would say that it's unavoidable and it happens all the time with us knowing it or not knowing it. One more quiz. Guess the type. And this time, this code is JavaScript. So what is the type? String, right. Uh, and that is correct. In this particular case, name is a string. But sometimes when I query a server to get a name, and I try to invoke a method, a string method on it, on it, I get this following error, which means it is not a string. How come? So apparently, the type of string, the type of name, is actually not a string. It is a sum type of a string and undefined. We usually solve this problem without thinking much about types, like just with an if statement, and what we actually do is that we handle all the cases for each type variant of that sum type. In this case, the sum type has only two variants, string and undefined. And sometimes there can be more. And that's what I meant that we sometimes cannot control whether we uh, want to mix things or cannot. It's just how it is and we need to be aware of it. So, in JavaScript, uh, there are very few types, very few building blocks which we need to somehow use to combine, to create a higher order type, like higher types, bigger types. And for some people, it's unfortunate dealing with those types, but I think they are enough for us to, to model all the things that needs to be modeled in our code. And to finish this talk, I think that people need to be aware of types more because types are natural for people, as I wanted to show you before. We think in types all the time and people should not be afraid of uh, scientific terms like algebraic 
or some other academic uh, terminology coming from the functional programming because usually it's, it sounds uh, more scarier than it actually is. So uh, if you have more questions about types or anything else, you can find me most of the time at the Wix booth in the Expo Zone. And uh, thank you for your attention.